Hello everyone, this is Fido from Self Taught Hustle, back at it again. Today we will be learning two very basic but very fundamental aspects of CSS and HTML, which is how to link the two extensions or the two different file types together. And we will also look at how to access tags or how to reference tags with our CSS and affect the styling of specific tags. There is different little nuanced ways of doing that. And we will go over that today in our tutorial. Simply put, when you want to link a CSS file to your HTML, all you have to do is write what is here on line seven. In particular, the most important part of this will be your href attribute, right? Because it's gonna point to where the file's at Whenever you see styles.css like this, or whatever the name of your specific file is, it means that this markup, this HTML here, is actually wanting to look for this file within the same directory, which is the same, just a fancy way of saying the same folder accordingly. So that whenever you see a slash here, for example, it will tell you essentially or give you the opportunity to look into another folder if you want. Say that your CSS file is actually locked in a folder called CSS, right? Then it's gonna what you're saying is, hey, look for your, what you're telling your HTML is, hey, look inside of the directory or the folder by the name of CSS and link me to the CSS file of the specific name here, right? So just keep in mind that is what is called a file path, which is essentially the route that you are using to reference another file somewhere in another directory or the same directory right you kind of think of it in some ways kind of like a little bit of an address if you will for simplicity's sake so if you don't have line seven you essentially will not be able to have your css interact with your html it's very very important whenever you set up your applications that if the CSS is not working with your HTML, just go ahead and take the time to make sure that you actually linked the two files together. I can't tell you how many times I've actually made this mistake on fairly sophisticated projects. Um, you know, I will bump my head here and there and just to realize that, oh, look, I, I forgot to link the two sheets together. It does happen more. It's more common than you think. We're going to now see how to link our CSS with our HTML. So here we're gonna grab our CSS file. We're actually gonna open that at the bottom, split down like that. And then so that we can clearly see the markup with the CSS. We have a few tags here, right? So we have our P tag, we have an H1 tag, and we have an H2 tag. Now, once you've linked your CSS with your HTML, you can reference and say, for example, color the text of each one of these tags by referencing the tag in a different way or referencing the text that's contained within the tag in a different way. You can reference the tag itself by doing something like this. So you could write P, right? And then brackets like that. And then you could write to color, color, red right and then that's viable css and then if you go ahead and then you actually open that in your browser you'll see that the text is colored red right so what we said is hey look go ahead and access the p tag that is in the markup and color the text contained with it to red right so very simple if you were to change this to another tag say that this actually becomes a for whatever reason it would become an h3 tag right you just write that here, another H3 there. Then all you would have to do to reference the different tag is by actually explicitly writing the tag name onto the CSS, right? And then it would be the same thing, right? You have a different element, essentially, that is contained within that tag, but you're referencing in the same manner at which you reference the initial P tag, right? So number one, you can reference the actual element itself. The other thing that you could do is set a unique identifier. And in this case, this would be called an attribute by the literal name of ID. And then you can set that ID name to anything, right? 
so that when you come over here to the CSS, you point to the specific tag that's associated with that ID name. If we want to reference, for example, header underscore ID, what we would write, because it's an ID attribute, we would write hashtag header ID like that. And then we're going to say color and then purple, right? And then we'll save that. And then we'll come back over here to the markup. And as you can see, the text is now colored purple. And then just for the sake of you guys seeing the dynamic change, and just for the sake of seeing you guys actually watch me change these colors live, I'll just change that to orange as such. And then boom, right? So then we've accessed the tags by their element. We've accessed the tag via the ID attribute. And now we're gonna access the tag via the class attribute. The only difference between class and ID is really from a CSS, from a referencing standpoint, is that one uses a hashtag when you're pointing to an ID and the other one uses a dot when you're pointing to a class. Right, so we're gonna point dots and then the name of that class attribute is header class, Ooh, all caps, really trying to get into SQL. So dot header underscore class, right? Brackets, and I'm gonna color this one. Let's see, just a random color blue. Right, and now you see the tag is now colored blue, right? So it's just different ways for you to do the same thing. For example, you may be in a situation where you, if you only have one tag, one unique tag, say you only have one H3 tag throughout your entire HTML file, well, that's fine. You could just reference the tag, but say that, for example, this is become goes back to a P tag and you have multiple P tags throughout your HTML, well, you may want to have a unique way of identifying each one of those p tags especially if they're going to have a different styling and that's where enabling something or implementing something like a id or a class specifically class and then id there to uniquely identify what you want to style as beneficial right so in short it may benefit you if you're using multiple tags or multiple elements to uniquely identify each one of those elements via an ID, right? Hashtag or a class here in here so that you can distinguish the different styles that each one of those elements may have, right? It may be that two pieces of text are contained both within P tags and you want one piece of text to be purple and then the other piece of text to be red. Therefore, you want to uniquely identify the differences between each one of those texts, and that's where an ID and a class really shine. Either way, today was a pretty short one. I wanted to thank you guys again for showing up. This one was very basic but very fundamental. Again, follow me on Instagram at self.hustle. Book a consultation. Link is in the description. Let's get your coding problem sorted out. Let's get you tutored, and let's get you on your way to achieving your goals. That was it for me today, and we will see you soon.